get your plot armor on because today we're going to talk about how to wear it properly. By the way, my name is Brandon McNulty. I'm the author of Bad Parts, also the author of Entry Wounds, and welcome to my writing channel. One of my subscribers asked that I do a video on plot armor, so we'll discuss that today. I'll explain what it is, I'll talk about the problems that plot armor can create, and I'll also give you some tips for using it properly. And also I'll be taking examples from a number of different stories today. I'll put them up on your screen. The ones that are in red have the heaviest spoilers. But let's start off by answering the question, what is plot armor? And it's when a character is protected from serious injury, death, or even major personal setbacks. The character is protected because the plot needs them to be alive and in good standing. And usually this applies to your main hero, your main villain, and other indispensable characters, other characters that the plot needs to have in play. And plot armor may wear off at the end of the story, and this is because the plot is basically over at that point, so a character like a major hero or major villain can die at the end, but until then they're pretty much safe. And one more thing to keep in mind, plot armor is not necessarily a bad thing. It can be a problem, especially when it becomes noticeable because heroes escape danger in ridiculous or lucky or unbelievable ways. And it also might cause problems if certain characters frequently escape danger while similar characters do not. But if you plan out your story properly and you create a sense of balance and you make sure that your characters are making smart decisions in order to escape danger, then your audience will buy into the idea of the story being real and they won't question the plot armor as much or even at all. All right, now let's talk about the downsides of plot armor, the reasons why audiences hate it. And I came up with a few different reasons. The first one is that it stretches your story's credibility. And plot armor can often remind audiences that the stories they're watching or reading are fake. Especially, for instance, when you have a situation where maybe a bomb goes off inside a crowded building and it kills everyone inside except for the main characters. Or you might have a situation in a zombie apocalypse story like The Walking Dead when a major character crawls under a dumpster and escapes a herd of hungry zombies and the zombies don't kill this person. Another downside is that plot armor takes away from your story's tension and suspense, especially in life and death situations. Audiences know that a main character can't be killed early on in a story, and so when situations get dangerous, the audience won't necessarily fear for the character's life. John Wick movies are an example of this. When John Wick enters a room full of assassins, we know he's going to survive no matter how many bullets, knives, or fists get thrown his way. And it's never a question of will he survive, rather it's a question of how he'll kill all the bad guys in the room. And it's worth noting that these movies actually embrace John's plot armor, and audiences love these stylish action sequences. That's the whole selling point of these movies. Now keep in mind, this works for the John Wick movies, but it may not work for your book, or it may not work for a story in a different genre, so keep that in mind. Be aware of what your audience is willing to accept. Another downside is that plot armor creates plot predictability. And because because we know that the main character can't die unless it's the end of the story, whenever they face certain death, we expect there to be some kind of twist that'll save them. Examples of this come from the TV series 24. And in the middle of season two, there's a situation where there's a live nuke in Los Angeles, and it's about to go off within the hour. So Jack Bauer, the main character, he flies this nuke out into the desert with the intentions of crashing his plane in order to save the people of Los Angeles. Now, anybody watching this show knows that it's in the middle of the season and it involves the main character. So there's gotta be a workaround here. There's gotta be some kind of twist that will save him. And when that twist does happen, it's less of a surprise because we expect him to survive. Likewise, when Jack Bauer is literally tortured to death in season two, we know he isn't really dead. And instead we're wondering, how are they going to revive him? And when he does get revived, it's not much of a surprise because we expect him to survive somehow. All right, now let's talk about how to wear plot armor, or better yet, how to hide plot armor, or how to downplay the fact that your characters have it. I'm gonna give you five tips, and the first one is to establish and follow the rules of your story. If you're telling a story that adheres to gritty realism, then make sure your characters solve problems in a realistic way. On the other hand, if your story is more pulpy, you may be able to show wild and crazy escapes without losing your audience. Just make sure that you establish that a character is skilled and resourceful enough to pull off these escapes. Raiders of the Lost Ark is a great example of this. Throughout the movie, it's established that Indiana Jones is capable of adapting to deadly situations. He can also pull off crazy 
stunts if he needs to save himself or kill his enemies or whatever it takes. And then toward the end of the movie, there's this one wild scene in which he's driving away with the Ark, he's trying to escape the Nazis, and then a Nazi busts into his vehicle, shoots him in the shoulder, and throws him out of the vehicle. Then Indy crawls along the underside of the vehicle before climbing back inside and retaking the wheel. And this is something that if it were to take place in a more realistic movie, we wouldn't buy it. If it were to be done by a character who hadn't been established as skilled and resourceful, we wouldn't buy it. But because it's Raiders, it's a pulpy movie, and we, we've established Indiana Jones as this capable character, we believe it within the context of this story. Tip number two, if your hero can't die, make them face other consequences. In other words, find other ways to hurt them. This may involve harming or killing secondary characters, or it can involve pushing your main character away from their goals, or forcing your main character to face personal failure. For example, in the Godfather movies, Michael Corleone cannot be killed. He's way too important to the plot. But he suffers in other ways, whether it's the death of family members, the loss of his wife's love, or the loss of his own humanity. Tip number three, provide reasonable excuses for why the heroes can't be killed. And this might hold true for one particular scene, or it might hold true over the course of your entire story. An example of this comes from the original Star Wars movie. After Luke, Han, and Leia escape the Death Star, they're chased by TIE fighters, and they survive despite the fact that the Empire should be able to just outright destroy them. However, Leia points out why Luke's team was able to escape so easily. They let us go. It's the only explanation for the ease of our escape. Easy? You call that easy? They're tracking us. Tip number four, raise the stakes and have your character rise to the challenge. And it's important to remember that stories are about growth. And if you're careful when crafting your story, you can start by dropping your main character into a low danger situation. Then you can increase the danger as the story goes on. And while you're raising the stakes, also enable your hero to cope with that danger. The Terminator is a good example of this, and it opens up with Sarah Connor. She's a waitress who is being targeted by a cyborg sent from the future. She starts off as a regular, everyday woman, and the odds are clearly stacked against her. But Kyle Reese is sent back in time to protect her and teach her how how to protect herself and her willingness to learn survival tactics and her willingness to take risks makes her journey a believable one. And then tip number five is that some stories can benefit from having a superhuman main character. And this doesn't necessarily mean you should make your main character a literal superhero like Superman, Wolverine, Spider-Man, whatever, but in some stories you can build a sense of mystery around a character and their ability to survive things that would kill anyone else. An example of this comes from the 2023 movie Sisu. And this is set during World War II. It's about a man from Finland who discovers gold, and then he gets chased across the wilderness by Nazi soldiers. And the man survives a series of increasingly unbelievable encounters, while we learn that he's a legendary commando with a dark, tortured history who has been nicknamed the Immortal. And the movie embraces this idea, and it uses it to create a bunch of exciting action sequences and build a story around this superhuman character. So I hope this helps. Question of the day, what is the worst case of plot armor that you've seen in a story? Let us know in the comments section below. Thank you for watching. If you want to support the channel, please pick up a copy of either one of my books. Bad Parts is great if you like small town horror. It's about people trading away their sick and injured body parts in order to get healthy again. And then Entry Wounds is great if you like thrillers. It's about a guy who picks up a haunted gun and he cannot put it down until he kills six people with it. Also, be sure to check out my other videos, like, share, and subscribe, and as always, remember to keep on writing.